we're setting up for free motion quilting on the Jazz 2, there are a number of steps. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to attach the free motion foot that comes with the Jazz 2. And you'll find that in the accessory case. The second thing that I do is I am really particular about the types of needles that I use. And I find my greatest success when I use a top stitch needle in either a size 90 or a size 80. Another needle that you can certainly use is a quilting needle. These needles are designed for quilting and especially for free motion work. Now, once I've got my presser foot attached, the next thing I want to do is make sure that I drop my feed dogs. And you'll find that lever on the back side of the free arm. And the easiest way that I remember how this lever moves is it moves from my left to my right. So left is the feed dogs are up, right places the feed dogs in the down position. And you can see that they immediately drop. Now, when I raise the feed dogs, I'm gonna take that lever from the right to the left, and you will not see those feed dogs on the surface until you take a stitch. Now, one of the most important things that I have found when I am free motion, whether it is on the Jazz 2 or any other type of machine, is I really need a flat surface. So if my machine doesn't sit in the bed of my cabinet, the one thing I want to make sure that I have is an extension table. And this is a clear acrylic table that is an optional accessory for the Jazz 2. And it really does make a difference when you are quilting on something, whether it's the table again or that flat surface. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that that needle always stops in that down position. I think that that again is a huge key to your success. And then we're going to need to adjust our tension. I usually start at six, and after I've played for a while and gotten out what I call my kinks, I might find that I either need to take that up a little bit or take that down depending upon what I'm doing that day or how my movement is that day. The other thing that I have found that I like, and I'm gonna show you both feet, is you have the standard foot or standard free motion foot that comes with your machine, but there's also an optional open toe foot. And I'm gonna go through that foot too, but I also think that that is a key item to have in your arsenal of accessories when you are free motioning. Now there are some aids that I truly like, and there's something that I always use uh, when I am free motioning, just because they help me tremendously as far as my movement on my fabric. And the first one is something that they call the Supreme Slider. And what this is, is it is kind of a vinyl surface that's got a sticky back that sticks to the bed of your machine. There's a hole in it, and that hole actually aligns with the needle opening on your, um, on your needle plate. So another one of my favorite quilting aids when I'm free motioning is something that they call, these are actually called machingers, they're quilting gloves. There are other types of quilting gloves out there, but they help me with my hand fatigue. Uh, that is probably one of the things uh, that you'll experience as a free motion uh, quilter is that hand fatigue. Other items include uh, a, uh, these round hoops that have the knobs on them. Again, that's hand fatigue. You're not gripping something so hard that your hard that your hands hurt afterwards. On the back side, they have that rubber grip that actually allows you to or helps move that fabric. In addition to hoops, there are uh, devices that they oftentimes you'll hear them referred to as paddles. It's the same similar situation. They've got that rubber gripping on the back side or some type of gripping on the back side and some type of easy way to hang on to that device so you don't have that constant grip on there that causes you to have that hand fatigue. So uh, my suggestion is is to look at all the other all the options that you have out there available and kind of decide on one that you think will work for you. You'll find that by using these types of quilting aids that your skill level will improve greatly over time. So now let's grab some fabric and start practicing our free motion skills. So I place my fabric underneath my presser foot and I always try to start at the top on my practice piece. Again, I can't stress enough about using a practice piece before you go to your real project. It just helps you work through your rhythm and once you get that rhythm down, you're ready to go on to the, your uh, project piece. Needle down 
and needle up because I need to pull that or I want to pull that bobbin thread up. And I've got my bobbin thread up, I'm back to that same needle position. I'm gonna lower my presser foot. And I think that when you're using the free motion foot, for me, I always have to remind myself to lower the presser foot. And the easiest way to see that is if we look closely at our presser foot, we can see that that plastic ring is right underneath that spring. The foot is up. When I lower that foot, you can see that the edge of the foot actually sits tighter to the base of the fabric, but you also see a gap between that spring and that plastic piece. And I'm just going to take a couple of taps just to secure that thread. Again, it's in the down position, or my needle's in the down position. I'm going to clip that thread, and I'm ready to start stitching. All right. As I mentioned, I prefer gloves and I'm gonna place my gloves on, and then we're ready to go to the next step. Now, when I was first taught to free motion, I was always taught to move the fabric towards me, to the right, away from me, and to the left. Now, I'm not saying that you have to go in that order. Those were just the steps that I was always taught. Again, our needle is programmed to stop in that down position at all times so that I always have control. The other thing that I have done is I actually turn my foot control backwards so that when I'm stitching, I'm pressing down on the thickest or the fattest part. And if you can take a look at where my hands sit, I have my hands a fair distance apart from. I'm not real tight here, I'm out here. I'm also not grabbing that fabric. You don't want to grab that fabric because what that does is that pulls up that bobbin thread every time that presser foot comes off of the fabric. So I keep my hands flat on my surface to move my fabric. And what I do is I always start out slow and I always start out with an easy movement. And this is just kind of what I call an up and down hill. If you need to, you can always draw something on your fabric and then follow it or trace it. Now, as I feel more comfortable, you can see I am picking up my speed. I always find that I have the best luck when I am at a medium speed. The other thing that you might want to look at doing is putting on a TV program or music, something just to kind of drown your mind out, which allows you to what I call think freely. Uh, one of the other things that I will do is I will talk myself through a stitch. And by talk myself through a stitch, what I mean is, uh, for instance, if I say, okay, I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna circle around, I'm gonna keep circling, I'm gonna come to the inner, I'm gonna go to the left, and I'm gonna circle back around till I come out of that circle. Just talk yourself through that stitch, and you can talk yourself through that stitch out loud, and then eventually you'll talk yourself through that stitch in your mind. There'll be a silent talk. The other thing I think that helps turning that foot control backwards is it allows me to be a little bit more consistent as far as my speed of my machine. And that's really what you really want to do is you want to keep that speed consistent because what that allows you to do is that allows you to keep your uh, hands consistent. I always look at free motion as you drive your car. Uh, most people, when they are driving their car, their foot is pedal to the metal and then you back off. Pedal to the metal and you back off. When you're free motioning, I have found over time in watching people, they do the exact same thing because it's something that you press down, right? It's just like your gas pedal, you press down on it. So if I can keep that press down consistent, I can match my movements of my hands or the movement of my fabric to that movement and what that does is that helps me keep my stitches more consistent. The other thing I can, all I can say is practice, practice, practice. Every fabric store that you go to always has a clearance section of fabric and what that allows you to do is it allows you to buy fabric at a reduced price that you can play with and you can practice with. And do simple. 
don't, you know, just do those little loops. And then when you feel more comfortable, you can start doing circles or pebbles. And remember, there is not a pebble that is uniform. Talk yourself through the movements. Always look where you're going to. Not where you've been, but where you're going to. The second you break that, oops, I did that one wrong, you're gonna slip. I'm gonna go around that circle, now I'm gonna come over here. It's kind of like, almost looking through, um, I'd say a crystal ball, but it's not really a crystal ball, but you're thinking yourself, you're plotting your plan. Now, the thread I'm using, because we always get that question about thread weight. The thread that I'm using is actually a 50 weight cotton in both the needle and uh, the bobbin. Um, I have also used uh, heavier weight threads in the needle, and I try to get that bobbin thread as close as I can, but that's where that tension is gonna come into play where you're really gonna to have to adjust that tension when you have differing weights. So let's take a look at my tension on the backside and see. Now you can take a look here that there are a couple spots where I've gone around that curve. Now that might be me pulling a little bit or it might be the tension. So I might just wanna take that tension past that six um, a little bit. You'll also see spots where you have uh, these little, it almost looks like kind of little loops or little knots, that's where you're hesitating with your needle. And by hesitating with your needle, what I mean is, is if I sit here like this, that's hesitating with your needle. Remember, every time that needle goes up and down, that thread is being passed through that position. And what will happen on that back side is you'll see that thread as almost, like I said, that little knot that you see. It's not necessarily a knot, it's just a buildup of that, uh, that thread. Another thing that you can do that's really uh, fun to do is, as I mentioned, I sometimes will, if you're having a problem, this is what we call a hand-eye coordination or what they call cell memory, is if I just draw on my fabric, what that does is that helps me figure out or make that connection between the pen and my brain. So then what I do when I go to my fabric, I make that connection between my needle and the brain. So my needle in a sense now acts as my uh, pen. So I'm gonna come down here and if I wanted to, I can actually trace these circles. And that gives me something to follow. And most people will say I'm not very good at tracing, and I completely understand that. But give it a try, do it a couple of times, and eventually it will catch. Now we've been using the presser foot that comes with the Jazz 2. The next foot I'd really like to show you is um, the open toe foot. And I really like this foot, and one of the reasons I like it is I like that open space so I can see where I'm going, where I've been, or where I need to go. To change out these feet, what I'm going to do is release that needle out of the fabric. I'm going to raise that presser foot, and I'm going to clip my threads. And then I'm going to use my screwdriver and I'm going to loosen that screw to remove this presser foot. Use that extra lift to pull that out. And this foot goes on in the same manner. You've got the claw and you've got this bar here. Both feet have that bar. That bar sits above that needle clamp. So we're gonna take that claw around that and that bar is sitting above that needle clamp. That's really important that that bar sits above that needle clamp because what happens is, is as you're stitching and that spring is moving, that bar comes down and that's what pushes it back up. That's where you get that, that hopping or that movement of that, this presser foot moving up and down on your fabric. If that bar isn't there, you're not gonna get that movement and it's, uh, your stitching is not going to be attractive and it's just going to be very difficult to move anything. Again, I brought that needle thread 
or bobbin thread, excuse me, to the surface. I'm gonna slide everything underneath the presser foot and I'm gonna lock that stitch in place. Needle is still in that down position. And now you can see how that is uh, open. I also have a larger area on that presser foot so I can see the area that I'm stitching. And you can immediately see the difference when I'm doing these circles, how I've got a little bit more visibility. And what that does is that just helps me check to make sure that my stitching is looking good. It also, that I'm aligning, it helps me uh, with just a little bit more, I would call it, say, precision. So let's come off of circles and let's try I'm just doing kind of a, what I would call a curly cue. Or we can try, I don't know if anybody's ever done, well, that was a bad olive, but olives are always fun to do. Bad olive. There we go. And you will find, as I've found over time, that there are certain directions you're better at, you know, left to right or right to left, top to bottom. So it, what I always do is I always work on the, the side that I always have the most difficulty with. Now let's make a square box. We're gonna come forward, we're gonna go to the right. And we're going to stop, and we're going to go diagonal. And we'll go back to the center, and we'll go up. We'll come down, and we'll go back down. Uh, zigzag, uh, which I just call these flames, just back and forth. That's a really easy motion to, uh, to learn. As you increase your speed, as you can see that I'm doing that, the biggest thing is to make sure that you're moving your fabric. If you're not moving your fabric, what we'll, you'll notice is that you end up with lots of tiny, tiny little stitches and you don't want that. Again, move that fabric, moving that fabric. And then those are just the zigzags or the, um, as I call them, uh, flames. Let's see, I'm not real good at feathers. I will have to admit that. So we can give this a try. We're gonna come down, we're gonna come up, and we're gonna create our first feather. Okay, and it's just basically a backwards and forward. But there are lots of uh, free motion artists out there that have techniques like that that um, are easy for you to follow. Uh, what we're doing here is we're showing you the tools that you need to be successful with free motion uh, on the jazz. And as I said, to me the biggest tool is that flat surface. On a personal level, I like the Supreme slider or other, some other type of system because I think the fabric moves easier. And then something like gloves or, I mean, if you don't suffer from hand fatigue, uh, that's fine. But I think, again, it just helps with that movement and that's what it's all about. The second thing I think is getting your tension and a lot of that has to do with how you're moving that fabric. If you are pulling that fabric, meaning lifting that fabric up or jerking that fabric as you're stitching, you will find that you have tension issues. Again, it's a movement of the fabric has to be smooth and consistent, not jerky, because that's where you run into problems with your tension. So if we take a look at the back side, let's see what happens here. And I'm gonna cross my fingers that I got that tension set, and that tension is gonna change, again, depending upon the fabric, the batting, and the thread you use, but to me, the next key is, is it's that needle. It's always make sure that you've got that top stitch needle in. And if we look at that tension, other than I've got some stitches where I'm a little longer, I think that tension looks really pretty ideal as far as going around that loop. So I think I found the sweet spot for myself on the Jazz 2.
And to reiterate, that top stitch needle, uh, the foot, and some type of quilting aid, including a flat surface, will lead you to be successful on the jazz too.